This is part 133 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss SP underscore depends system stored procedure. In SQL Server, there are several ways to find object dependencies. One of the options is to use view dependencies feature in SQL Server Management Studio. We discussed this in part 131. Another option is to use SQL Server dynamic management functions such as DM SQL referencing entities and DM SQL referenced entities. We discussed this in part 132. The third option is to use the system stored procedure SP underscore depends. We'll discuss this in this video. So SP underscore depends is a system stored procedure that returns object dependencies. You can see the syntax of the stored procedure right here. Execute the name of the stored procedure and this procedure has got one parameter object name that is the name of the object for which you want to find the dependencies. So this object name can be a table name or a view name or a procedure name etc. So for example if you specify a table name as the argument value then the views and procedures that depend depend on that specified table name are displayed. On the other hand, if you specify a view or a procedure name as the argument value, then the tables and views on which that specified view or procedure depends are displayed. Let's understand this with an example. So for the examples in this video, we'll be using these two objects, this employees table and this stored procedure. So now, if you look at the definition of this stored procedure, we know that this depends on this employees table. Now let's use the system stored procedure, sp underscore depends, and the name of the table is employees. Now when we execute this, we expect this stored procedure to be returned because this stored procedure depends on that table. Okay, now let's copy the name of this stored procedure and then use that as the argument value for sp underscore depends stored procedure. Now let's execute this and see what we get. Look at that. When we specify a stored procedure name as the argument value, then we get the name of the table on which that stored procedure depends. Not only the name of the table, but also the name of the columns within that table on which this stored procedure depends. So depending on the argument value that you specify here, you will either get, you know, the objects on which that object depends. In this case, you know, when we specify a table name, we get all the views and stored procedures, you know, that depend on that table. If we specify a view or a procedure name, then we will get all the table and view names on which that stored procedure depends. Okay. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that this system stored procedure SP underscore depends may not report dependencies correctly always. For example, so the way we have created these objects is first I've created the table and then I've created the stored procedure and here we are using the system stored procedure to find the dependencies. So here it's working as expected. Now let's do this. I'm going to drop this table. So when we drop the table, so let's drop the employees table and when we refresh this we should not have that employees table now what I'm going to do is create the table again but before we do that look at the stored procedure we still have this system stored procedure SP underscore get employees we didn't delete that now I'm going to create the table once again at this point if we go ahead and check the dependencies of employees table look at that when I execute that look at what it says object does not reference any object and no objects reference it. Similarly, when we execute this, you know, SP underscore depends the name of the stored procedure, we get the same result. So in this case, SP underscore depends is not reporting the dependencies correctly. Okay, so keep that in mind when we use this uh, SP underscore depends stored procedure. Another important point to keep in mind is that this system stored procedure is on the deprecation path, meaning this might be removed from the future versions of SQL Server. So if you are planning to use the stored procedure within your applications, think twice. When a new version of SQL Server is released, then probably it wouldn't be supported in that and you will may have to change your application code. So that's why SQL Server recommends using the dynamic management functions 
terms that is either DM SQL referencing entities or DM SQL referenced entities instead of using SP underscore depends system stored procedure. Thank you for listening and have a great day.